Uh, now it says it's broadcasting. And the participants are filing in. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Amber and I um, don't use uh, Zoom that often, so we just had a few challenges. We apologize for being late. Um, so thank you, everyone. I am Wendy Haddock Brown with Garden of Life Canada. We'd very much like to thank you for joining us today for a presentation on collagen protein, plant-based protein, and whey protein. How do I choose? Throughout the presentation, we encourage you to submit your questions uh, via the Q&A or chat section that will appear uh, top or bottom of your screen or on one of the sides, just depending on what view you're using to join us. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background um, on Amber, uh, Amber Vital is a certified nutritionist in integrative nutrition and an Ayurvedic clinical consultant. Since early childhood, she's been fascinated with the power of foods, herbs, and dietary supplements to optimize health. And after earning a BA in, in economics and Russian, she went on to pursue this passion. Since 1996, she has both worked in product retail and maintained her own wellness practice. Often working with doctors and holistic integrative medical professionals, promoting optimal health inside and out. Since 2010, she has reached a wider audience as a freelance content freelance content producer for several natural health publications, educating retailers and consumers alike on what quality really means in both food and supplements. Amber has been a member of the Garden of Life education team since 2014, continuing her mission by empowering extraordinary health. At this time, I'd like to hand it over to Amber. Thank you so much, Wendy. Wendy is my, just my compatriot, always by my side leading these webinars. So she does it for a lot of people. I appreciate you, Wendy. All right, everyone. Let's jump into one of my favorite topics, especially the collagen proteins. And I actually know that a lot of people have asked questions about that, which is not surprising because it's such a hot topic. Um, but I think a lot of us just don't really know how much protein we should be taking. Why should we take a protein supplement? Uh, what is the difference between different kinds of proteins? What's going to be the right one for us and the right one for our particular application? So I hope to kind of, you know, clarify that a little bit tonight. Let, let's talk about what protein is and what protein does. So first and foremost, you can't make a human without protein. So we are composed of so much protein. Obviously you think about your muscle, but there's types of protein in your skin and your hair and your nails and in your bones and in your joints and in your ligaments. Proteins make enzymes, proteins make neurotransmitters, proteins make hormones, they make immune system components and signaling molecules. So yeah, it's not just you know muscle mass that really is what protein gives us. It's so, so, so much more. So interesting in the signaling category, protein can actually signal to uh, suppress a hormone called ghrelin that suppresses hunger. That, uh, or that, so the, the hormone stimulates hunger. If you suppress it, uh, you don't have that hunger. So that is a huge part in protein being satiating. Protein being satiating too, because your body doesn't preferentially break it down for energy while a gram of protein has as many car as many um, calories as a gram of carbohydrate does. It, it's not your preferred energy source. So eating protein kind of slows the energy release. You don't release it into. It takes longer to digest. You don't release it into your bloodstream as quickly. So you don't get that rise and that spike in blood sugar. So it keeps you full longer. But is it important to know that? When we talk about protein, it's not, not just about how many grams you need. It's also about what are the amino acids in that gram. An amino acid is the small components, like little codes that make up a big protein compound and they dictate how it is shaped and therefore its function as well. And so that's what we're gonna talk a lot about is the difference in amino acid composition in a lot of different proteins and how that changes what they're suited for. So as I said, uh, enzymes, you have, to, you have to actually be able to digest the protein to utilize the amino acids, okay? 
So to do that, you have to have appropriate stomach acid. You have to actually have enough proteins in your diet that get properly digested and absorbed to make the enzymes that break down the protein. How ironic is that? So when your hydrochloric acid in your stomach and the protease enzymes further down break up those proteins, they break them into very small chains of amino acids called peptides that can get into your bloodstream and then go and be used all over your body. Some of them stay in the gut. Some of them interact with your microbiome in your gut. Some of them support the gut lining. Uh, ones that are transported can go through the liver and be further broken up and be sent other places. Certain amino acids actually don't go to the liver. They go straight to the muscle. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we have constant protein turnover in the body. And that's why if you go a few days without, you know, doing anything strengthening, if you're in bed sick, if you were on a car trip or road trip, you will probably uh, break down protein and use it somewhere else. So, uh, you know, it's really important to keep the intake and the digestion and also the usefulness of those proteins. So you may have heard about essential and non-essential proteins. Essential means not just that they're important, but it also means that they, you have to eat them, you can't make them. So some amino acids, like some other of the 21 amino acids you need, some of them you can actually make out of other amino acids or de novo, meaning from scratch. Uh, these nine essential amino acids here on the left, you actually have to eat them and you, they have to be an appropriate amount in your diet or you won't be able to use any of the protein that you take in. And of those nine, these three are what are called branch chain amino acids. Branch chain amino acids skip the liver. These are the ones that skip the liver and they can go right into use in your musculature. And that therefore allows you to repair and rebuild after a workout. So these are commonly taken as like free form amino acids or in some kind of a blend before, during and after a workout for somebody who's trying to really build uh, stronger muscle, bigger muscle, and has a lot of repair to do post-workout. So branch chain amino acids, as I said, are used directly by working muscles and having them in your diet is very important. You really aren't getting complete protein if you do not have branch chain amino acids in your diet because you won't be able to prevent that catabolism, that breakdown of muscle. They're also important for a lot of other uh, actions in the body. It's not just about exercise and muscle. They're very important in so many different places, but having them during and after intensive exercise helps to get you back out exercising again sooner. You have faster recovery, less muscle soreness. So I've put this chart together. Um, it, it can be a little uh, confusing, but let me clarify that what I did is I looked at three of our products, our sport plant protein, which is out of pea protein and cranberry and baobab and navy lentil garbanzo bean and Irish, our whey protein from Ireland, uh, which, is a, which is a whey protein isolate, mostly very clean, non-GMO project verified, a very common sport type of protein and our collagen. And we'll talk more about this later, but I wanna start showing you the difference in the amino acid composition of these different types of proteins. So if you're a little bit nerdy, you'll really like this. One of the days I broke it down per gram of protein. <clears throat> and so these are milligrams uh, of the amino acids present in each gram of protein. So first thing I want you to notice is the difference between plant proteins and animal proteins. So whey comes from animal, plant comes from plants. So there's not uh, a big difference in alanine. There's a pretty big difference in arginine. Plant proteins are higher in arginine. Animal proteins can be higher in lysine, as you can see here, okay? But I, I highlighted some of the really important ones like glutamic acid, pretty equivalent in plant and animal proteins. Branch chains can be pretty equivalent in, in plant and animal proteins if we work hard to make it that way. In other words, leucine is really prevalent in whey protein, but we can get it up there pretty well in a plant protein by making combinations. In other words, not just hemp, not just pea, not just brown rice protein, but a combination of different sources of the storage uh, proteins, grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, putting those together helps you get a good broad amino acid profile. We come down here to threonine 
and tryptophan. And you can see that it's higher in a whey protein than it is in a plant protein. Now looking at collagen peptides, and this will be the big reveal. A collagen product is not a complete protein. Bone broth is not a complete protein. So hydrolyzing that bone broth into a peptide product is still not a complete protein, meaning it can be very rich in certain things. Look how rich it is in glycine. Look how rich it is in proline. And it has things in it like hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine that plant proteins and whey protein don't even have. But it's very short in branched chain amino acids, very low in important things like tryptophan and cysteine, doesn't have as much glutamine, glutamic acid as your what we call whole proteins. So while you can supplement a meal or replace a meal with a smoothie that involves a plant protein or a whey protein that is made to be like a meal, like food that you eat, your collagen protein will be taken on top of that. So you can take either a, a, like a whey protein or any kind of a plant protein, any time of day, you can have a smoothie made of those with a salad. You can have it on its own, throw a bunch of stuff in it, make a super smoothie. And you're really getting a pretty complete picture of your proteins. With collagen peptides, you don't count that toward your total protein requirement for the day. If you were working out and you were calculating that your total protein needs were say 120 grams a day, you're calculating that with your meals and your smoothies made of these kinds of protein powders that we're going to talk about. If you want to take collagen peptides for your skin, for your hair, for your nails, for your joints, for your bones, cartilage, intravitreal discs, you know, your gut lining, you take that on top of your required 120 grams that you determined you needed in the day. And it will give you extra glycine, extra proline, extra hydroxyproline, pre-connected and ready to go to work in your body for repair. So really two different things. So I kind of draw a really thick line here between the smoothie type protein replacement powders and collagen peptide powders. They're really two different classes. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's talk about what collagen is and what it does. So collagen is something that we get only from animals. You can't get it from plants. You can get the cofactors to put it together from plants. And I have a few metaphors about collagen. Um, like you just saw, collagen has a whole host of amino acids in it, but it doesn't have everything that you need for every function in your body. If you wanted to take uh, collagen peptides and think that it was gonna make you build muscle, that's like taking a kit that has all the pre-cut lumber in it for a redwood deck and thinking that you're going to build a redwood sauna. They just don't go together. That's not what it was for. So you have to know what your goal is. And with collagen peptides, it's about repair. And if we start with collagen peptides in our late 20s, early 30s, and we're getting it on a regular basis, or if it's a part of your culture to you know, let's actually have some broth right here. So this is actually some good elk bone broth. And if it's part of your culture or you've adopted the tendency to brew those broths and you cook up chicken feed and things like that, then you might get that from childhood and it might be a part of your life. And that may be something you're getting and are used to digesting all the time. The difference between a broth like I have right here and collagen peptides is that these have been pre-digested. They've been broken down into what are called peptides, smaller chains of amino acids that are better absorbed, better utilized by the body. And they mix really easily in cold or hot water. And so they're very versatile, which means that you're gonna use them every day. I don't have bone broth every day. I only have it when my wonderful husband makes it for me. So, uh, you know, the great thing about peptide powder is you can grab it and put it in your coffee. You can grab it and mix it up with water, mix it up with magnesium, mix it up in your green drink. And it just sort of disappears in there. And it's very, very versatile. So things that we, key benefits, things that we really think about are, you know, supporting your skin, that it has that bounce back, that tone that we tend to lose as we age, that you can actually get stronger nails, stronger hair, better joints and also better bone resilience, not just 
uh, dense bone, but bone that actually gives a little bit and isn't brittle. And then gut lining health. If you don't have a healthy gut lining, you're not gonna digest your food well. So very, very, very important. And so here's an idea about how collagen works in the skin. You make these fibrils and they're connected by something called elastin. And this is kind of between your muscle layer and your, uh, your fat layer, your fat layer, muscle fat, and then all of this collagen and then your skin. And as we age, these collagen fibrils don't get put together as well as they used to. It's about slowing down enzymes, not having the right nutrients available to run those enzymes, catalyze those enzymes to put things together, about not having all the right amino acids, uh, about having a poor diet, about having poor digestion, about having lower hydrochloric acid in the stomach, which doesn't set you up to digest your proteins as well. So really as we age, we almost need to provide better nutrition for ourselves, I hate to say it, than you did when you were young. I always say kids can squeeze nutrition from a stone, you know, and so, uh, you know, when we, as we age, everything sort of slows down. So giving ourselves not only the collagen peptides from an animal product so that we have that pre-made coming into our body, um, you know, we're also needing to get the right nutrition to put that back together. Cause with collagen, you still have to digest it just like any protein. You've got to break it down into smaller components and those smaller components need to get in to your bloodstream and go where they're going to repair. Really not sure how I feel about putting collagen on the skin and having it actually go to making collagen. It doesn't really make sense. It's too big. The way you make better collagen in the skin is by eating it, having it broken down, absorbed into the bloodstream, and then put, you have enough left over that it gets put into your skin and your skin improves, okay? So collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. And the most common type of collagen in the body is type one and three. And so we often see that for sale, but it's also important to know that you can actually take type one and three collagen from any kind of an animal and make any kind of collagen that you need in your body. And I think I've seen in research that the human body has maybe 40 different identifiable types of collagen that are put to use for different purposes. Even the cornea of your eyeball, the discs in between your vertebrae, the lining of your blood vessel, you know, it holds your teeth in place. Uh, your heart valves, there's just so many places that collagen is utilized and important. And so as I showed you on that uh, very elaborate chart, uh, collagen, all collagen, all types of collagen, type one, type two, type three, type four, five, 10, 16, are very rich in glycine, hydroxyproline, and proline, okay? And your whey protein and your plant protein are not very rich in proline and only collagen has hydroxyproline because that animal already took the proline and using vitamin C converted it to hydroxyproline and stuck those two together, just like a preset Lego that is going to go into making your collagen. The great thing about collagen peptides also is that uh, being rich in glycine, you take them in the evening time, they can actually really help you sleep. So I have a great little cocktail that I make with collagen peptides and magnesium powder that not only goes really well to work in your skin overnight and repair, but it also really helps you sleep well. So how are you going to choose a protein for what you need? And you may choose a plant protein or a whey protein for your daily needs to meet your protein requirements on the go for your athletic endeavors. And you may add collagen on top of either of those for purposes of repair, for purposes of anti-aging. Uh, and, and those are, who are you is the question. I see some of you raising your hands and I see you. Uh, if I, we've got like, 450 people on here. So I can't really stop, but I'm going to answer questions as we get toward the end. If you have a question, the great thing to do is to type it into the chat and we will try to answer all of those here at the end. That would be awesome. So 
what kind of a person are you? What do you have going on in your life? Sorry, my screen is really fast. So are you a student and you're trying to be economical and get nutrition in a smoothie and not eat at the um, cafeteria all the time, not eat out all the time? Uh, that can be very can for their high school students and college students. A lot of people who are going back to school who take it with them as a dinner. You know, are you a, a really elite athlete or are you a weekend warrior? So you're looking for a lot more prepare, uh, repair. Uh, are you busy and on the go? Moms, dads, you know, doing everything that you have to do. These are all might use a smoothie. Another person who really elderly population because they tend to not put as much effort into getting a nutritious meal. Sorry, Amber, I just wanted to let you know, we just lost your audio uh, for a few minutes just on that last part when you were talking about the students. Okay, so I'll start back with that. Am I clear now? Yes. Okay. So um, there are a lot, I was saying that there are a lot of parents that will buy a protein powder, a plant or a whey protein for their student as they go off to college. There are a lot of even like, you know, adults going back to school who take protein powders with them. So instead of eating out, instead of eating at the cafeteria, instead of getting something unhealthy, instead of the expense of it too, maybe you take a protein powder with you. All of us are busy, all of us are on the go. And then uh, the population that I was saying is really important is our elderly population. Because I know that my grandparents uh, so my grandmother, after my grandfather passed away, my aunt, after my uncle passed away, she just kind of wanted to make, um, you know, peanut butter and crackers every night instead of having a really healthful meal. And that is going to age someone, not just in visible ways, but internally, and they're going to go downhill faster. One of the worst things about aging is what's called sarcopenia. You lose muscle mass, which means you lose stability. You lose your balance. You lose your strength going up the stairs, getting in the car, walking into the grocery store. And protein powders can be really beneficial for that. It's really good for all of it. One thing I will say is just taking a whey or a plant protein or even a collagen protein and just sitting at your desk is not going to build muscle. So some people think if they take a protein powder, they're going to get really big muscles and they don't want big muscles. So a lot of women think, I don't want to take a protein powder because I don't want bulky muscles. You will not get bulky muscles eating protein powder unless you exercise those muscles to be that way. And if you're trying to take it to get big muscles, but you're sitting at your desk, you're not going to get big muscles that way either. You're actually putting in a, a, a raw material. You're putting in like lumber into your body and what you do with it, what it builds is dependent upon what you do to make it work for you, okay? So the great thing about our garden of life protein powders and even our collagen peptide powders is we have options that you can add to a super smoothie if you're gonna put in your fruits and your kale and all the stuff that you wanna add in. And we have protein powders that you can just mix with water. They're already flavored and a little bit sweet and delicious. And those are the ones I tend to use. I just have a shaker cup put in some water, put in some powder, shake it up and drink. Because for me, it's really just a supplement. I'm really just trying to get some nutrients and I'm on the go and I'm gonna get a full meal later. Um, so one question that I get a lot between plant and whey and then collagen is, should I mix my collagen with my plant protein or mix my collagen with my whey protein and just get it all at once? Since it is supposed to be added on top, should I mix them all together? You can. And what that's like is um, like eating the, the leg of the chicken with the skin on it. Okay. It's, it's kind of like that and gnawing on all the bones and everything. Like you're getting everything in one go. But the great thing about collagen peptides is they absorb quickly and they go to work quickly. If you don't take them with other proteins and you don't take them with fats. So you can get your biggest bang for your buck by taking your collagen peptides separate at a different time of day with water, with a green drink, with your magnesium powder and doing your plant protein or your whey protein as a meal 
or a snack or a pre extra fiber. You can have extra fat. You can have, you know, other types of proteins as well. All right, so let's get into what we offer at Garden of Life and uh, you know, why Healthy Planet partners with us all the time, what they love about what we bring and what we love about them. We're big on dual certification. And so as we talk about ingredients, we'll talk what that means. Certified Organic and Non-GMO Project Verified together really give a very deep audit, a huge transparency on the supply chain. It's not just about, you know, is an ingredient organic? Are most of the ingredients organic? It's about everything that is possible in that product being certified organic. It's not just about, could you test the product and not find any genetically modified DNA or markers of genetic modification? It's about, hey, there's a plant extract in there and it was extracted with alcohol. Was that alcohol made with corn? And if so, was the genetically modified. It's a very, very, very deep audit and deep look at everything that goes into our final products. And that's just something that we are adamant about, especially with our plant proteins and our whey protein. And then even further, our collagen peptides, our paleo foundation certified, which is really one of the only certifying bodies that can tell you that the animals were truly grazing on pasture and forage and hay, and we're not eating genetically modified food to fatten them in the last six months of their life. Cause that's pretty common. I'm sure you see it where you are. I live in Montana and I see all grass fed animals and I see stockyard animals. And that's not the one I want to eat. I want the grass fed animal. All right. So talking about pea proteins, we actually started uh, with a Canadian, Alberta, Canada, pea farm, a family, multiple generation family of growing peas. And with pea protein, it has a lot of great benefits. It offers those branch chain amino acids, uh, you know, which are great. Those branch chain amino acids, the leucine, the isoleucine and valine that goes straight to work in your muscles. And that's awesome. Uh, pea protein now today is really smooth and takes on flavor really well and gives a really good mouthfeel, really good texture, is very versatile, can be like the protein powder itself is actually 85% protein. And because of what you have to do, how much you have to soak it in water and grind it up into a slurry to centrifuge and separate starch and protein, because of all that soaking and all of that grinding and making it really a fine slurry we have a really good digestibility. Something you may know about dried beans, dried seeds, dried grains, and dried nuts is that if you don't soak them, they're pretty hard to digest. And if you don't know that, definitely look into it because that is really the way throughout human history. And, and even squirrels do it. They like bury their nuts for a while and let them break down a little bit. So if you soak your, your legumes, your grains, your seeds, and your nuts, you will get way more nutrition out of them than just trying to eat them uh, you know, raw. We think we want everything raw and a soaked nut can definitely be raw. Sprouted is still raw, but they yield a lot more nutrition than uh, just dry or dry roasted, for example. So we are really big on that. When we add other uh, legumes, when we add other seeds, add other grains like sprouted brown rice protein to our protein powders, we're very adamant that they be soaked or soaked and sprouted. It's a big part of what we do. Uh, and so the difference between conventionally grown peas and organic peas is huge. Conventionally grown peas, you may or may not know this, but all legumes and grains since the early 80s are allowed to be sprayed with glyphosate, which is your main ingredient in Roundup. Not um, for the reasons you would think, it actually acts as a desiccant. So it dries the crop quickly and can get it into processing. So it's been in our wheat, it's been in our barley, our rye, it's been on our navy beans, it's been on our garbanzo beans, it's been on our peas and our soy. Even before genetically modified crops to tolerate it were developed. So it is in our food supply. You may have seen news to that effect lately. The other thing is that when you harvest peas green, you have to spray them with fungicides. So to avoid all of that in organic farming, you have to let them dry in the field. They turn yellow, you harvest them completely dry, you blow off all of the dirt and sediment, and then they go and they get soaked. And like I said, just like making hummus, 
they get soaked and soaked and soaked and soaked in water until they start to even ferment and break down a little bit and can be ground up and centrifuged and separated. That whole process of watching them in the field, growing them organically, processing with just water, centrifuge is a lot more expensive, but we use this pea protein in everything that we have. So this raw organic protein is a great multi-use protein. You've got athletes that use it. It's actually uh, informed choice for sports certified, which means that it's tested for a whole bunch of banned substances and metabolites of banned substances. So professional athletes, college athletes, high school athletes, Olympic athletes love these proteins because they're guaranteed to be safe when they're gonna get tested for performance enhancers and other things. So in each scoop, you're getting 22 grams of protein and BCAA is again, those branch chain amino acids that we were talking about, the leucine, the isoleucine and the valine. So if you're taking this the middle to end of your workout or after your workout, you're getting those branch chains that are gonna to go to work and start repairing your muscle and help you build it up bigger, right? And 22 grams is great having 80 grams of protein after a work, I don't care how hard you worked out, you're not going to absorb all that at once. It's going to take you hours. And so to really take it easy on your digestive tract, not let things ferment in your gut, not take it, be hard on your kidneys. Really, you only need 20 to 25 grams at any given time. You can have more later. You can have a meal later, but to support the workout that you just did, this is a great amount. And so what the raw organic protein is, is a diversity of protein sources, sprouted brown rice protein, the soaked pea protein, and then 13 other sprouted grain seeds and legumes to make kind of a melange of protein sources, vitamins A, D, E, and K to be like a, a good, uh, all your fat solubles that you would have in an animal protein, um, probiotics, they taste great. None of them have sugar. The chocolate and the vanilla are slightly sweetened with stevia and the unflavored has no sweetening or anything. That same protein base goes into our all-in-one shake. This is like the meal on the go. This has grass juice powders. It has fruit and vegetable juice powders. It has tons of fiber as a whole bunch of other antioxidants from those fruit and vegetable juice powders. You've got the probiotics. We have our vitamin code, vitamins and minerals. So one scoop is 20 grams of protein. Two scoops is really where you get into it being like a meal. And you have your vanilla and chocolate, which are slightly sweetened, but sugar-free or very low sugar with stevia. The uh, lightly sweetened has a little bit of certified organic cane sugar. And it's actually my favorite because if, if you don't mind a little bit of organic cane sugar, it has the best taste because it has that authentic sweetness. You could add a banana to it if you wanted a little bit sweeter or whatever else you want to do. These are meals on the go. These wind up being, I think we calculated, they're still really at like $5 per meal and it's all organic, non-GMO project verified, vegan, gluten-free. You know, you won't get that healthy of a meal at the cafeteria. So this is great for people who are busy. This is great for people who are on the go. This is great for an elderly person too, maybe at just one scoop at a time, just to give their body the chance to digest it a little bit more. The other thing that these two have are digestive enzymes as well. They have 13 digestive enzymes. That's a full spectrum of digestive enzymes to help you break down your fats, your proteins, and your carbohydrates. And they're all non-GMO project verified. So we used to only have three or four enzymes in there until we managed to get a whole full spectrum of non-GMO project verified enzymes. What's important about that? It means they're not made by genetically tweaking microbes to make them. It means they're not made by the fermentation of corn that's genetically modified. It, it means a lot of things when we look through the supply chain of non-GMO project verified enzymes. So both your raw protein and the protein that go, the shake that that goes into have those enzymes and they have that base of pea and brown rice and 13 other sprouted grain seeds and legumes. Only the all-in-one shake has like that grass juice powder and veggie and fruit juice powder. So, and the vitamins and minerals. So it's a little bit more like a meal. So when we left plant proteins and launched into whey protein, we didn't leave it behind, but we moved in a whole new direction for Garden of Life that just sort of blew my mind. I didn't expect it. And we found an amazing, amazing source for our whey protein, an island, a big island called Ireland, where they really put a lot of effort into 
ramping up their agriculture and there's a huge demand for their agricultural products, but they're doing it in a very sustainable way. They've only got one island. They have to preserve their waterways. They have to preserve their land. They have to preserve their animals. So rather than you know, ramp up their animals with hormones to get them to produce more milk, they choose a good milk animal and they feed them really well and they keep them really healthy. So these animals are actually on grass probably 300 days a year. The, 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 um, the actual certification from a greener world requires them to be on grass 250 days a year, but the promise from the Irish farms, there's 2,400 of them. They're all under 100 acres, under 150 animals. They're in being milked or inside having a calf or in for inclement weather or because they're sick. Amber, so would you why would to, you put the barn? Amber, would you be able to repeat that? Your internet connection just cut out. Oh, audio. So about the certification? Just so you started to garble when you talked about the molecules. If about that was even the word you were saying, it was just the last few minutes, like the last 30 seconds or so. Uh, okay, was I on whey protein? <laughs> you had already gotten to the next slide. Okay. So um, talking about grass-fed animals, talking about animals that are actually on pasture because there's pasture abundant and there's no reason to bring them into a farm, okay? So really uh, the great thing about Ireland is they have abundant grassland all year long. And the only time that an animal comes inside is because they're being milked twice a day or they're calving, giving birth to a calf or the weather is bad uh, or they're sick. And that's the only reason they would not be out to pasture. So this whey protein not only guarantees that the animal is in a good situation, but that the product we're getting from it is really healthy. Okay, so that's our whey protein. And as I said earlier, whey protein, you know, is rich in tryptophan, it's rich in proline, uh, it is rich in the branch chain amino acids. And these whey proteins are delicious, vanilla and chocolate flavor, and they are 20 uh, four grams of protein and they have six grams of branch chain amino acids. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out is that an animal protein like whey will always be higher no matter what you do. And so when we look at our plant protein, you can see that in fact, 30 grams or two scoops of this plant protein gives five and a half grams of branch chain amino acids. So something you need to know if you're a plant-based protein person is that your total intake of protein needs to be higher than someone who is getting most of their protein from animal products. You can get the same benefits. You can be just as healthy. You can engage in all the same athleticism and build the same muscle but just know that you'll need a higher protein intake. Maybe an example would be if you figured that you needed 120 grams of protein and you're doing it plant-based, you might need 150. And that's just to make sure you get all the right amino acids. So in our plant protein, you have the pea protein, the sprouted navy lentil garbanzo bean cranberry seed protein, but we also added a polyphenol blend for recovery tart cherry, apple, goji, turmeric for when you're intensively exercising. The great thing about these is they tell you exactly on the label if you're an athlete, how many grams of protein you're getting and how much of that is branch chain and how much is glutamine. The whey protein shows you 24 grams and you get more branch chains. So that again is what I mean about whey protein. It's very efficient for when you're trying to build muscle. So the difference between these two and taste and texture, they're both really smooth. They're both the smoothest we have at Garden of Life. They both taste awesome. They're both great, just mixed up in water. You don't need to mix them with milk or anything like that. And they're really designed in digestibility to be used within an hour after your workout, toward the end of your workout or within an hour after so that they're getting into your musculature and 
letting you build and strengthen the muscle group that you worked out. So if you were to take these just any time of day, they'll go into general use in your body. If you take them toward the end of your workout and within that window and they get digested and absorbed well, they will go to work in the muscle group you just worked out. So nutrient timing is really important. I'm not an expert on it, but I learned a lot that if you just worked out your quads, it was leg day, and you take your protein, whether it's whey or plant, within the end of your workout up to an hour afterwards, you'll get bigger, faster. You'll get stronger, faster because you're really, you've got all these enzymes in your muscle that are saying, let's build it up right now. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about collagen peptides. As I said, collagen peptides are not a complete protein. You want to have them on top of your plant protein, on top of your animal protein, on top of your meals that you eat that are full of protein, but they are really great for repair, really great to slow the aging process. Let's not say anti-aging, but to slow the aging process. And as I said, the thing I'm proudest of in our collagen peptides is paleo certification. Go to paleofoundation.com and look at what they require for certification. It's not simple. Many, many, many brands say grass fed. This is what demonstrates that for our products. So this is my favorite to just add to coffee or to a turmeric latte or a matcha latte a tea, golden, you know, golden milk or a chai. This is really easy to add to a hot or a cold beverage. You could certainly add it to a smoothie. As I said, if you're just on the door, on the go, out the door, most people can actually turn these 28 servings into 56 by doing a half scoop. But if you are older, if you're trying to look better, get stronger hair, if you're trying to uh, also repair inside in your joints or in your gut, you may wanna take half a scoop twice a day. And this is really economical. It gives you that option. We also have this fabulous beauty product. It's the same, same peptides as in the blue bottle, but in here you get 12 grams of those peptides per scoop and you get what I call screws and nails and a carpenter to put your collagen together. These are the plant-based ingredients that will actually help you rebuild these peptides into your own collagen structures. So it kind of speeds up the process. It's really good as an all-in-one if you're afraid you're not getting all the nutrients that you need. We also have something called a plant collagen builder tablets in our MyKind line that contains these three ingredients, the silica, the biotin, the vitamin C, and that can be added to the blue and white product or to our joints and mobility product. So this one, the multi-sourced collagen simply means that we have 10 grams of the grass-fed peptides from the cows and we have a what's called functional ingredient from chicken cartilage. They're two different things. These are meant, the peptides are meant to get in your bloodstream and go everywhere in your body and help repair your joints. The chicken cartilage collagen is meant to stay in your gut. It's called UC2 and it stays in the gut and teaches your immune system to sort of spare cartilage when it sees it in your body. So if you have a knee injury and cartilage is floating around in there and your immune system keeps attacking it and it's always aggravated, this stuff along with turmeric seems to calm that aggravation, calm that inflammation and help you repair better. And then the peptides from the cows go in and help you repair that joint better. So all in all, this is to help with your joints, to help with mobility. It has a couple of functional ingredients in it to help you. It will also help you with your skin. It will also help you with your hair and your nails. And you could combine it with that plant collagen builder to really make sure you're getting all of the ingredients you need to put all your collagen uh, together anywhere that you need it in your body. This one, the turmeric is delicious in like a hot tea. This goes great in golden milk. Uh, don't sweeten your golden milk, just add this. And this gives it a nice apple cinnamon sweetness. I've added it to like dandelion tea. You could add it to Earl Grey. It, it, it is really a great way to take it. Okay. So I'm going to leave a little time for questions. Wendy, how should we handle this? 
I have done my best to try and compile as many of them as possible. Um, and there's some really great ones here. Uh, so uh, the first uh, questions I want to make sure that you address is, are there concerns uh, regarding people consuming proteins and them affecting the kidneys negatively? So there are people who have kidney function uh, issues. You know, they actually have lowered kidney function. They probably have been to the doctor and been told they have lowered kidney function and they need to take protein in smaller packets, you know? And it, it pr probably if you've been to a doctor and you have um, impaired kidney function, they probably told you to be on a protein sparing diet and a nutritionist is probably helping you with that. Most of us are not going to have a problem with it. Where you saw people getting a problem was those free form aminos. So an amino acid blend that everything is just singular amino acids and they take 60 grams of it during a workout, you know, because somebody told them to, that it would be helpful. That's where you see uh, uh, that it can be hard on the kidneys because that's just too much at once. It all gets in your bloodstream and what you can't use, remember I said, you can only use like 20 to 25 grams at a time. What you can't use goes to your kidneys and has to get eliminated. Even if you ate a steak dinner and you had 50 grams of protein in that steak dinner, you're digesting it so slowly, so gradually that it's not all released in your bloodstream at once. And so it doesn't put that burden on your kidneys. It's isolates like free form amino acids that people take too much of that can put more stress on the kidneys because it all goes in the bloodstream at once. Hope that helps. Uh, what are the guidelines for uh, a general protein daily intake? So we tend to say uh, 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight as a baseline. And then you go up from there, maybe up as high as 1.5 grams per kilogram body weight um, when you are an athlete, you know, when you're really physically active. And so uh, you know, knowing what your activity level and using an app or a calculator to determine generally what your needs might be based upon your height, your weight, and your activity level, I would definitely recommend that. But as a baseline for anyone who just is a student who's working at a desk, uh, someone who's elderly, you want to start at that 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight as a minimum. And then you want to make sure you're digesting it well. So again, if someone knows that their digestive tract is impaired, if they know that their gut lining is inflamed, if they know that they have a hard time absorbing nutrients, they probably have to take more total protein in that time period that they're healing because they're not getting it all absorbed. Are there any concerns with consuming protein or collagens and them affecting medications? Hmm. I can't think of anything offhand. And the reason I say that is because at least at Garden of Life, we're delivering it like a food. I definitely think I've seen people take, like I said, high doses of free form amino acids, which get in your bloodstream really fast. And some people can actually get a blood sugar spike from that, believe it or not. Um, and so that would definitely affect you if you have high blood pressure, if you have um, hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. So those are things to watch out for. But when we talk about garden of life proteins, which is what we're talking about tonight, these are like concentrated food. And that's what I really want you to know. And remember, we try to keep as close to the source as possible. So it's like the closest reflection to a meal that you can get in a stable powder on the shelf that you can mix in water, you know, so it's really like a meal. And if that's not going to interfere with your medication, you know, you have to watch the turmeric. Um, you know, you have to watch any time that you see another herbal in the product like that. Are there any concerns with consuming protein and uh, fatty liver or with whey male hair loss? With whey for male, getting male hair loss. Wow. Um, kind of out of my scope. Um, with fatty liver, everything can be more difficult. You know, it really depends on what that fatty liver is impairing. But remember that fatty liver is, if it's non-alcoholic fatty liver, it's coming from high sugar intake. So 
Swapping out your sugar for protein can be good, especially more complex proteins like this that don't turn to sugar. Um, but if because of fatty liver, your pancreatic, um, like your ducts are blocked, you won't get as much bile. You might not, you might actually have some issues even with pancreatic enzymes. You have issues with digestion. You have issues with cleaving the amino acids that are sent to the liver. Um, and so it just makes it harder to utilize nutrients, fatty liver does. So, with, but it's not going to necessarily um, uh, cause it to get worse or uh, impair. You're still gonna need protein. Um, with whey protein and male hair loss, I cannot say, I would say my concern for that would be the source of the whey protein. As always, when we're talking about things that might be hormonally related, that's really what you want to look at. And uh, it, 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 it probably goes along with the uh, activity level that a man might be engaging in, which might amp up testosterone levels and might get a lot of um, aromatization of those testosterone uh, into the negative kind that can cause hair loss and other issues. So it's, it's really not just the whey protein, it's what else is going on. How are they working out? Uh, how much are they taking? What is the health of their enzymatic pathways as well? Uh, for menopausal women, uh, are there any considerations uh, to take into account with proteins? Yes, they're uh, really helpful <laughs> because you definitely have to watch your sugars as we get into menopause. It just becomes harder and harder. Stress levels that tends to wreck your blood sugar. That tends to make you reach for more sugar. You already have high levels of cortisol that make you put on weight around the middle. It can also lead to, uh, just like with men, what we were just talking about, uh, hormones being, you know, estrogens being routed toward negative and harmful um, uh, manifestations. And so, you know, using a protein wisely to help to balance your blood sugar, to get you nutrients when you would otherwise reach for something that's junky, uh, can be a huge part of managing that period of life and also keeping the muscle mass where it needs to be so that you have better fat burning, so that you have better energy, so that you have better enzyme and hormone production. And the source of your protein at that time is going to matter, just like the source of your diet up until that time matters. We know that women that go into menopause with high toxicity from, I don't know, taking birth control pills from, uh, you know, their environment, from the food that they ate, from the stress that they've engaged in, all of that makes menopause worse. So anything you do that's clean, anything that you do that supports your body leading up to that time will give you uh, a better time. And the great thing about protein powders, especially like the all in one is if you have fiber in there, you add some MCT oil to give it a good fat, you're good. Like you're going to have really good blood sugar balance and that's going to positively affect all these aspects of your health. Uh, so I've, uh, there's a, several more really awesome questions here. So can you speak regarding uh, collagen molecule size and whether or not a liquid be, would be more absorbable due to that? So all collagen products or peptide products that have been researched and have shown efficacy in joint repair, in skin thickness and moisture maintenance, um, uh, in resiliency of the skin, all of these studies, whether they looked at chicken, fish, cow, pig, sourcing, the size is typically between one thousand and five thousand daltons one and five kilodaltons our peptides the source that we have runs between one and three kilodaltons you will have out there in the market some specialty products that you take in two gram amounts five gram amounts that may have been further hydrolyzed to be smaller and so they'll say that it will get to a certain part of your body faster but if you're taking 10 grams, 20 grams a day of a type one and three peptide that is between one and three kilodaltons like ours is, you're going to be able to use it for every single process in your body. And that's 
both common, that size is common, and it is what was used in research. In fact, I, I want to believe that fish peptides are smaller and more effective than pork. And I looked for something that would support that. And there were studies that actually put fish and pork head to head from the same company that supplied it. And the pork peptides actually worked better in the markers that they measured for skin thickness, for skin moisture maintenance. Kind of blew my mind. I, I, don't, I don't want to consume it from pork. It's a pretty hard supply chain to keep clean. Um, but you know, that's something that humans have consumed for a really long time and it works really well in the human body. The great thing about bovine peptides is that we have a very good source, a clean source, and they can be just as small of peptides and just as effective. So, you know, really we're right up there where it needs to be, to be effective, but again, um, not on the skin. I don't really see that as being the way to get it into your skin. Uh, is collagen useful to help address uh, specific joint conditions or joint and bone issues? Um, so if you're speaking about something like Marfan's, I, I'm not really sure. There's mixed uh, indications for that, you know, where people have a, um, if you have a, a collagen production disorder, elasticity disorder, uh, there's mixed information about whether you should or should not take it. So I can't really speak to that, but I definitely would say going back to menopause and aging, you know, yes, you need your calcium and your magnesium and your vitamin D and your K2, but it's super, super, super important that you have adequate collagen in your diet, because that is what will not only make the bone stronger, but less brittle. You get people who get kind of a false bone density uh, improvement. The DEXA scan says, oh, your bone density has improved. You're now just osteopenic. You're not osteoporotic. Good job. And then you fall and it shatters and you're thinking what happened? It's because it doesn't bend anymore. So kids, you know, they bounce, <laughs> they have a lot of collagen. And if your bone has the crystalline matrix of the minerals, all the trace minerals, plus the calcium, magnesium, everything, and has collagen woven in there, it has flexibility and resilience. And you have greater longevity on your bones. They're not as brittle. You're not as likely to break them. So I find collagen to be a huge part of uh, menopause, of aging for both men and women. And then I find your, your dietary protein, your whey protein, your plant protein, whatever you choose to be extremely important to make sure that you have a muscle mass that pulls on that bone that encourages continuous deposition of bone and strengthening of bone. If you aren't using your muscles, your body won't be signaled to lay down new bone. So you kind of have to do it all together. You know, I wish I could say it was a one-stop shop, but we really need our dietary protein or a dietary protein supplements like whey and plant protein. And then we really need those collagen peptides or if you've, like I said, consumed bone broth all your life and you digest it really well, that tends to be pretty good. The peptides are for people who are catching up. You know, We're like, hey, I wasn't doing bone broth. I don't have it all the time. I don't have access to it. How do I catch up? And these peptides make it really easy for us to catch up. And if you're in your 50s, 40s, 60s, and you wanna support bone health, um, really, and joint health too, that peptides are pretty indispensable. It's just one of those things that I, I don't, you know, I want to eat it, but I supplement it because it's just so much more effective. Is there a better uh, protein choice for weight management? There's a lot of uh, research out there that says that whey protein is kind of the gold standard for weight management. And it, it has to do with some of the amino acids that it's bundled in, the branch chains, things like proline, certain in, um, immune immunoglobulins that are in it that actually support healthy inflammatory spawn in response, not a excessive inflammatory response um, because it's, uh, you know, easily absorbed into the bloodstream. It goes to building muscle, which is going to help you burn fat more. So it's considered the gold standard, but there have been some studies with different combinations of plant proteins too that show that. But I would say if I was going to, about what we're talking tonight, I would say whey protein is kind of considered the gold standard for helping you build musculature that will help you burn fat. Collagen 
helps your body look better with the fat you have. So it makes stronger collagen fibrils so that the fat that is below that collagen matrix doesn't bubble out and look like cellulite. So collagen doesn't necessarily help you lose weight so much as it makes your skin smoother and you don't have fat that is unattractive to you or in your perception. Okay, I've narrowed it down to the last three questions just uh, due to time here. Uh, so the first one is, uh, what's the best time to take a protein or collagen? Is it with or without food? And can you also speak to uh, those who do workouts and when okay. to take protein? So if you are wanting a protein as a meal replacement, like you're taking it as a super smoothie, then you're probably putting a whole bunch of things into it. You've got the protein powder. You might have some fruits or some veggies or a juice or something that you're mixing in with it, some fiber, some fat. Um, and that's just a meal on the go, right? And that you're just trying to get all your nutrition in one thing that's a convenience. If you're trying to nutrient time for muscle building with a plant protein or a whey protein like ours that are both pretty quickly digestible, getting, drinking them as you're finishing your workout, as you're leaving the gym so that they're going to work to build the muscle group that you just worked out. That's the best timing. Uh, some people who are really athletic or really trying to build muscle will take more protein again before bed. Um, and that's just another nutrient timing trick. Um, Collagen peptides, as I said before, if you combine them with other proteins or you combine them with fats, they will still work. It'll be more like eating bone broth or eating chicken with the skin on it. But if you want it to really get well absorbed and get a big bang for your buck, take a scoop of collagen peptides at night. Again, with magnesium is great because Collagen peptides, like our beauty collagen, has the peptides with the glycine, the vitamin C from the amla, you got the biotin and the silica too. And then if you mix that with magnesium, you have a great recipe for sleep and sleep always makes you look better. And you have magnesium, vitamin C and glycine, which help you make hyaluronic acid. So you don't have to buy it. You don't have to eat it. You can make your own if you have those right ingredients. And that will help keep your skin more moist. It will help keep your joints more lubricated. Even your eyes will work better. Your retina of your eyeball will work better because the jelly in your eye is healthier. So for most bang for your buck on collagen, I say empty stomach. And for me, empty stomach is before bed or first thing in the morning. You'll get better absorption. Um, you'll get faster efficacy than if you combine it with other things. But I also always put half a scoop of the plain peptides in my coffee because I like it and it's easy and it's convenient and it's kind of on the go and I make sure I get it in every day. Those are different ways to take it. Did I answer all that, Wendy? I think you did, yes. Um, now, um, what is a collagen option for vegans? Plant collagen builder. So what you do if you're vegan is you take your plant protein with its host of different amino acids and you combine it with some cofactors like in the plant collagen builder tablets, the vitamin C, the biotin, the silica, the A, the E, the polyphenols or antioxidants that are gonna help you take the aminos, break them down and reassemble the right aminos together to build collagen. So it does take longer generally uh, as a, a vegan option because you have to fully digest all your plant proteins pick out the glycine, the proline, and the hydroxyproline, and then put them back together again. So I say that it's like having a Lego set uh, that is just general and deciding that you're gonna build a skyscraper. You have to figure out all the pieces that go together versus having a Lego set that is meant to make the Eiffel Tower and certain things are already put together and you can put together this fancy tower really quickly. That's kind of the difference between getting your peptides from an animal and getting your amino acids from plants and having to assemble them together. One thing I will say though, a very good vegan or vegetarian who has a wide variety of foods and gets a wide complement of different protein sources actually probably needs collagen peptides less and will have less difficult time making their own collagen 
than an athlete who eats lean chicken breast at every meal and never eats the fat or the skin or the bones um, because they are excessively high in the amino acid methionine and excessively low in the amino acid glycine. And they need collagen more than a healthy vegan or vegetarian. So that's a real interesting tidbit. I hope it didn't just confuse you, but you know, it's about balance and plants have plenty of glycine and plants have plenty of pro proline, but they require plenty of vitamin C in your diet to turn that proline to hydroxyproline and make your own collagen. So if we're eating bovine collagen peptides, that cow ate plant proteins, made vitamin C, turned that proline into hydroxyproline and made really strong collagen structures that we're now taking in pre-made. If you are eating the plants and making your own collagen, it just takes more effort and more total protein, as I said before. Good questions. You guys are tough. Uh, and, and the last one will take um, that it comes up every so often, um, but can you please speak to um, the information that comes out in the news every so often uh, regarding uh, brown rice and arsenic mm. concerns. So this is one of the things about all plants. When you're concentrating them, any of them can be, you know, laced with some heavy metals that were in the in the soil. And it isn't a question of conventional or organic agriculture. I mean. Obviously, if you're using copper sulfate as a pesticide, there will be copper in your soil. Obviously, if you're using uh, sl industrial sludge and runoff and your water is coming out of some crazy industrial river, yeah, you'll have more heavy metals. If you live next to a concrete factory, you'll have lead in your soil from drift. But, you know, really it's about weather. It's about rain patterns. You know, none of us can escape what rains down on our land. And so really like with our brown rice, we had to go all over the world to find the least uh, mercury, arsenic, lead, cadmium uh, that we could find. And we found it in rural Vietnam and rural Cambodia. Um, and right next to them is Laos. And if you know your history, Laos uh, got tons of heavy metal contamination from um, left over bombshells and, and military stuff that shrapnel that rained down on their land. So it really depends on where you are. We didn't get as good a uh, read from California rice, from Texas, from Louisiana. Domestically, we didn't have as good of a choice. So we're testing all the time. We, there will always be some. We adhere to the California standard. They have a Proposition 65, if you've read about that. Uh, they require any supplement to be below very strict limits, below our Environmental Protection Agency standards. And if it's not, that supplement has to have a sticker that says that something in it is known by the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects. So none of our products have that sticker because all of our products meet California's Proposition 65 standard. So even a kale powder can have uh, lead in it or arsenic. Even cacao powder is laced with cadmium. So we tested like a thousand different sources of cacao for all of our sources of, uh, for chocolate because that's very common and it can be from industry but it could very easily be from volcanic soil. That's where you get a lot of heavy metals spewed out of the earth. So you have your standards, we want to adhere to them but it is a tricky thing. Sometimes we have to forego uh, a source that we would love to work with because they're small, they're sustainable, they're supporting a village because there's too much of a heavy metal in it to meet the California standard. So it's always a juggle. All of your plants can have heavy metals. Whey protein will not have heavy metals because the cow's liver already pulled them out. So that is why if you're comparing a whey protein to a plant protein, they don't compare. And if you're trying to look for, you're trying to say, oh, well, these plant proteins are laced with heavy metals and these whey proteins aren't, that's gonna be true across the board. Collagen can have heavy metals depending upon what part of the animal it comes from and how careful they are. Collagen made from bones, bones accumulate lead, for example. Um, it can accumulate other heavy metals depending upon how they're 
how those animals ate and what they ate. So that's another area to look out for. But I will say my little plug for Garden of Life here is that we adhere to that Proposition 65 standard and everything is always tested because if we don't pass, California can sue us. So, you know, we've made an agreement and we stick to it. Oh, so brilliant, Amber. Thank you so very much. Uh, we did go a little bit over, um, but it, it was due to all of your absolutely amazing questions. Brilliant, um, questions. Just brilliant, brilliant questions too. Um, due to time, we have not been able to cover all of them. Um, if there is something you would like assistance with, please do not hesitate to email me at webinar at gardenoflifecanada.com. That is webinar at gardenoflifecanada.com. Uh, many of you have also asked whether or not there is um, a copy of the presentation available. Uh, my understanding is that Healthy Planet um, sends out uh, a link to the recording. Uh, so hopefully that will happen. Again, like I said, if you do have additional questions, you can uh, email me at webinar at gardenoflifecanada.com. But thank you so much to all of you for spending the last little over an hour with us, uh, learning more about uh, proteins and collagen. And Amber, thank you so much to you for sharing this with us. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you to Healthy Planet. And I wish I could see you all, but I hope to get up there sometime soon. Thank you. Take care, everyone.